and in this video we're going to be making a safe zone. So when the player walks past this little gate section here, he's going to be entering in a trigger. And what's going to happen when he's in the trigger, he's not going to be able to take any damage, his weapon is going to be put on his back, and he is not going to be able to put it out. And we're going to print to the user with a little hint that they're in the safe zone. And when they leave, so they're in the safe zone, then when they go to exit, the weapon gets pulled out automatically, and they're able to take damage again, and we're going to hint to the user that they're out of the safe zone. Now, the way to do this is go ahead and open up your trigger, set activation to any player present, and make sure it's set to repeatable. Now, usually in the condition, by default, what is in there is just this. And the problem with that is if we just have it set to this and hint high, when, let's say we have 10 players, and one player walks into this trigger, well, this trigger is going to activate high on every single player that is in the server. Like it pretty much it just runs for everybody. So the way to get around that is just set the condition to this and player in this list. Now what this does is it detects this can be any unit name that you want, so just if you named uh, AI unit Bob, it would detect if Bob has entered the trigger. Then we use the in command, which checks if whatever this is, is in something, an array. And this list is just an array of things that are inside of the trigger. So, what we have, want to happen when on activation is ran, we want to have it execute an XQF file. And same thing for on deactivation. And deactivation is, well, just when the player exits the trigger, or the trigger turns off, pretty much. So we want to go ahead and give, we're going to execute a file. We want to give that a handle that we can use. So we're going to call it in zone h for handle equals, we're not passing in any parameters, exec vm in safe zone dot sqf. Now in deactivation, we don't have to worry about having any sort of handle or anything, so we can just do exec, actually, since we're in a trigger, we're going to do just null equals no parameters, exec vm left safe zone dot sqf. Now we need to go ahead and create the files. So go ahead and just make two files in safe zone left safe zone. Okay. Now inside a safe zone, one of the things that I mentioned was disabling damage and putting the weapon on the player's back. So if you see game modes where the player gets holstered, this is pretty much what they're doing. They're using switch weapon from action. So we're going to go ahead and make it so the player cannot be killed. So player allow damage false. Now we want the weapon to be put on our back. We're also going to be getting an introduction to loops here in a second. We're just going to use a normal while loop, as I will get into for loops later on in another video. So, as you can see here, the syntax is unit, then action, which being the command, then the command, or whatever, I don't know what this is technically called, but the variation that you want to happen under action, being switch weapon, the target unit you want it to be on, same thing than the muzzle index, which is out of this list here. However, I found that 100, well, it holsters it. So, player, us, action, switch, weapon, player, player, 100. And we're also going to go ahead and do a little print, hint, and safe zone. So now when the player enters through that little gate, his weapon is going to be put on his back, and it's going to print out that he's in the safe zone, and he's going to not be able to take any damage if somebody was to shoot him. Now the problem is, while he's in the safe zone, he can pull his weapon back out and still fire. 
So we want to be able to change that so that is not able to be done. As well as when we exit, we want the weapon to be pulled out as it is now, at the ready position. And print that the player is outside of the trigger and allow the player to be able to take damage again. So, this is where we introduce the while loop. Syntax for this is just while, then our condition, do, then our open and closing curly braces where we want our code. Now, th this being the condition, it has to pretty much be a boolean. So we can just do simple true, and this will create an infinite loop unless this entire script has some sort of way inside of the while loop or gets closed outside of this SQF file to pretty much kill it or break out of the loop if you're inside it. So for this, since we are going to be killing it in left safe zone, we can just leave it as an infinite loop, which is generally frowned upon unless you have just some sort of control manner, which we will here. So this can also be while 5 is greater than 2, run loop. That will do the exact same thing as setting it to true. So in our condition, we are going to want to do our play action. And we also want to do a sleep command, because otherwise it will run at a very, very fast rate that is completely unnecessary and taking up more resources than necessary. So sleep pretty much adds a delay. So this will be running, I believe, once every time the frame is drawn. So if you're running, I don't know, 60 frames per second, that's running 60 times per second. That is way unnecessary, so we can do sleep. Then we'll just do one. So this will sleep, this will run, wait a second, run, wait a second, so on and so on. So now when we go into our safe zone, our weapon gets put on our back, and we cannot pull it out, because as you can see it runs the animation, and then it puts it right back. But when we exit, and we try to do it, it's still going to put it on our back because the while loop is still running and we have not actually been able to break out of it yet. This is where the terminate command comes in. So terminate script handle. Now our script handle, if you remember, was what we added here. So our script handle is in zone H. So all we need to do is, as it says right there, terminate. I forgot what it's called. Terminate in zone H. And we want our weapon to be pulled back out. So we can just go ahead and copy this and paste it. And to put the weapon back to normal, just set it to zero. And we also want to give damage, make it so the player can take damage again. So we're going to do player allow damage true. And go ahead and just hint out of safe zone. So now if we test it, We run into it, puts our weapon on our back, we cannot take damage, and we cannot pull out our weapon. We exit the safe zone, it says out of safe zone, we're able to take damage and it automatically pulls out our weapon. As you can see, like so. So, that's how that works. And the convenient method about doing it this way is you can have a bunch of safe zones set up so you can have pretty much just literally copy and paste that trigger around anywhere that you want and you don't have to change anything in it because it'll all be handled by what is in here so all it's doing is just calling in safe zone when you enter and left safe zone when you leave the trigger and that's pretty much it that's how you can use it kind of as like your structure for if you have multiple safe zones and that'll be all for this video